Okay, Nicole asks, uh, I have a few questions. We all have questions, Nicole. Uh, <laughs> Don't wait. It's time for all everyone to get their voice all be heard. Uh, is there a way to create a link to an Office file and make it force the user to make a copy of it, like on Google Docs? Can I just start by saying that having having assisted with a Google to M365 migration, those sharing links, the, the level of craziness that is the Google sharing links, that is a mess. Like, and, and I, I, I say this kind of as part of my answer, like the copy versus move link versus print link, like they have all these pieces that can get put into the URL that just make migrations a disaster from a permissions perspective. That makes but that's not really sense. an answer to Nicole's question. <laughs> <laughs> just commentary. It does, make it, yeah, it's just... it does make it a struggle then when you're doing, because on the Google migrations I've done, it makes it a struggle because they kind of want, they expect it to act the same when they come yeah. over. And I always do. If yeah. you're going to start training them, don't train them on what's the difference between the two. It's like, well, what have you got now? Because if you try to do comparison, they're either going to get something they like or something they don't like. Um, yeah. And you live in the negative more than you live in the positive. So um, usually I say, you know, if you're going to do a link, create one where it's a view only, but they're allowed to download. So then they have to create a copy. If they can't actually edit it and they can't do much else with it, then they're forced ultimately to do a download. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, in SharePoint, one thing is that you can provide a link to a, a file, but require them to check it in check it out or check it out it's true yeah well, I, I think there's go ahead go ahead sherry there's two sharepoint features that that offer you the option for that too on the sharepoint library you can select the checkbox that says it doesn't open in the browser window it has to open in the client mm -hmm. well that would require them to have the licensing to have the client application as well so there's a little gotcha but you can also save it as a template format and then they won't be able to save it back either. So that's true. That's the default <laughs> setting for for folks that don't know that with Word, uh, yeah. so not Word with Office documents. Mm -hmm. If you have the original file as a template, then when somebody wants to go and utilize that, and they go to save. Then it would be as a standalone document. Um, they would have to you know additional steps to go and save it as a new template or what what have you. But that's a creative way around doing that so when you do file save as it'll ask you to browse and then it'll take you back to the web location but that's the only place you can save the file format if you want to save it as a pdf or you want to, don't save it as a macro enabled macro enabled is bad yeah. but if you save it as a have. template you'll be fine <laughs> yeah. what what is nicole trying to do what's the purpose of that question that's the real question yeah <laughs> Well, like, if it's like a thing. form or something, maybe she could use forms instead. Like there, there's other. But is it like a versioning question? Just making mm -hmm. sure that if people are making edits, that they're making yeah. edits to a net new. Because this is a this is one of the reasons why Microsoft promotes so heavily, and you have now Microsoft Loop, which even more ways of co-editing on material. Uh, yeah. is is that we do these things through co-editing, but you have the ability to go back when you, you have versioning on and to see what was there before. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does concern me because creating a copy of a file, I mean, we've been talking about doing a link to a document so that you got one source of truth. So mm -hmm. it, it kind of detracts from why don't you just email an attachment then and it's their, their own copy. Because, I mean, you're effectively removing some of the great features of sharing a link. So, yep. you know, it comes right. down to if it was a template, then you're right. Like Shari said, then sure, you know, you want to keep something that's consistent. But then I go, you're just taking away all that, the version history, which you talked about, the yep. one source of truth the, <laughs> and co-editing. And, I, you know, kind of to me, that creates a nightmare because you've got a copy of a copy of a copy and how many of copies. Yeah. Well, and I think it goes back, Jay, to what you said. Uh, you know, are we trying to recreate that previous experience by by moving over? You're over in this world now. It's It's different. And and we should talk about what are you trying to accomplish? Why are you doing that? Is the reason why she's even asking for this? Is it more of a it's a crutch because you did things a certain way because of the limitations of the previous technology? It, you, what are you really trying to do? What's your goal here? Because there right. may be a completely different way to do it. 
and probably more secure and compliant way of doing it uh, over in Microsoft 365. Not that yeah, I'm biased. I, Sh Sherry, I think you mentioned for, a form earlier, right? Like yeah. if you can if you can look at the Microsoft 365 stack and improve whatever you were doing with the rest of the capabilities, form, power platform, flows, all sorts of things that you can do that are so much better than just make a copy. Um, uh, I, I yeah, I, I I think yes. <laughs> I, I think what's happening, and I can imagine this because you know, being from the end user world, somebody is opening a file and they're editing the original and they're messing up the original and they're tired of reverting it back or fixing it. And, and I totally get that. You know, like a leave request form. But yep. you know, again, we have other ways that we can make that easier. Um, but the, oh, one little thing about the SharePoint opening it by default, that is a library setting. It's not a document setting. So if they're really wanting to centralize templates so that they are in one place, I'd create a separate document library because that limits like co-authoring and some be able to use the web version of the document, that type of thing. So could, oh, you, also do, the, sorry, could oh. you also do a marker's final? If you kind of do a marker's final and you can't, you're locking it maybe for, for editing with a marker's final, then they, they're kind of having to do another document off the back of it, potentially. Yeah, and, uh, well, I guess if they mark it as a record, it can't be edited. So I'm not sure what you mean by marker's final. Oh, like in, um, in Word, you can do let, let anyone know it says final document. Often it's kind of it can be a little bit more locked down or you can put some protection around the document itself. So that would right. force them as well might be another way from the actual app itself rather than through your link whether it's sharepoint or onedrive so to do it more from the application rather than the actual app yeah i, I did a whole I, course on linkedin i'll give you a link to that christian of, of how to use yeah, yeah. templates with sharepoint libraries in the spreadsheet automate... Sherry, you know we've provided the spreadsheet it's right there. <laughs> i know yeah. throw it in <laughs> But I think that now that we've discussed this, I mean, I think that this scenario, it sounds like it, it, it uh, and maybe Nicole will watch this and let us know. We'll do part two of the video. Uh, but it is is that idea of of having, you know, like the templates and wanting people not to mess up that, that uh, you know, kind of parent, uh, you know, version of that. And I mean, my guidance has been coming from the project portfolio management world and building out PMOs for multiple clients, multiple companies, the idea of creating a template library and locking down the library, but allowing people to go and pull down a template and then modify that. So I can go in and update the template as the owner of those things. But every time you go in as a project manager, download the version, it saves you a local copy. And it's a subset of that. You've got to rename that, but it can never mess with the template. And uh, so there's plenty of ways of doing that if that's the scenario in SharePoint. Uh, and then, of course, in Teams, which is still SharePoint. <laughs> yeah. Yay.